Hey everybody, it's George Carroll. Happy New Year to you. So this is my favorite time of year. It's an opportunity for us to push the delete button on 2015 and create a brand new vision. Wipe the slate clean. Create a brand new vision for 2016 and step into it anew. And there's a few things that I'd love to share with you in this video to help you step into 2016 uh, with clarity and being more on purpose. And the first thing is to get clear on what you would like to create for 2016. Jim Rohn once said, most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. And we live in a day and age where information is coming at us from every which angle. And because we move in the direction of our focus, if we're losing focus every six to eight seconds is what current studies are showing. If we lose focus and we move in the direction of our focus, we gotta ask ourselves, what are we losing our focus into? So the key is, is to get clear on 2016, what you would like to create. Maybe you create a vision board and I highly recommend it. You know, I do a, a, an event every year called the greatest year of your life. And this year it's in Denver, Colorado, January 8th through the 10th. And we spend three hours creating vision boards because it's a powerful exercise. When you give yourself three hours to focus on what you want and to connect with the energy of the things that you desire for the new year, you already put in motion a level of momentum that most people, when they don't focus on what they want, won't ever create. And there's a magic that happens as a result of that momentum. It's so amazing. So imagine spending three hours creating a vision board, whether you do it at the event or not. Imagine spending three hours at uh, creating your vision board and getting that momentum, that energetic and emotional momentum, getting connected with the things that you desire. So we move in the direction of our focus. And if we can consistently focus on what we desire and connect with our vision board every day for just a few minutes, I mean, just imagine what it would be like living into that space, having those things, being that version of you in the body that you love. Imagine being that. And the game is simple, guys. Really, the game is simple. If you can connect your energy and your emotion to the resonance and the vibrational frequency of your desires, you will, you will literally tune yourself to your desires and the reality around you will begin to morph around your desires because you've become your desires. That's the name of the game. So the question you wanna ask is, how many different ways can you tune your energy and your emotion to the frequency of your desires? And if you can consistently stay tuned into that, you're gonna watch miracles and magic show up. So get clear on what you would like to create in 2016 and become the energy of it. Be the energy of it and do whatever exercises work for you that helps you tap into being that emotion, being those emotions within you that, uh, that emanate that energy to pull into your existence the things that you desire. So whether that's a vision board or whether that's um, you know, some people create a vision book where in their book they have a bunch of images, uh, lots of ways to do it. Get clear on what you want to create. I always recommend to create your top five targets for 2016. So what would be the things that you would go after in 2016 if you knew you couldn't fail? And something to consider is that most people don't set goals and set targets because they're afraid of failure. So the question I have for you is if in 2016, if you were willing not to judge you, what would you really go after? If, in two, if you just said, okay, 2016, I'm gonna go after everything I can and I'm not gonna judge myself this year. This year, I'm not gonna judge myself on whether I hit my goals or not. I'm just gonna go after them with a joyful ferocity. What would you really go after in 2016? So something that, to keep in mind is, is that it's not about the target, it's not about the goal, it's not about achieving it, it's about the journey and who you become along the way. The version of you you have to expand into to create and generate those things in your life. So what would you really go after if you didn't judge yourself in 2016? Last thing I wanna share with you is, Tony Robbins taught me a long time ago is we are who we hang out with, we become who we hang out with. And so I remember 10 years ago, I was hanging out with a group of guys where we'd go out and pretty much, you know, drink the night away every weekend. And one evening I had just gotten into the personal development industry, reading books and listening to audio programs for the first couple of months. And I shared with them, I had this new dream of becoming a motivational speaker. And in my mind, I thought they were going to be super supportive. I thought they were going to be giving me high fives and chest bumps and butt slaps, but that wasn't the case. All I got was laughter ridicule and judgment. And I went to bed crying that night and I woke up 
knowing that I had to find a new group of friends, of people that were going to support me. So that's when I started going to seminars, Abraham Hicks seminars. Uh, that's when I started going to Tony Robbins seminars and Access Consciousness seminars years later. And I started going to NLP trainings and all of these other personal development modalities where I could connect with people who weren't, who didn't give up on their dreams, people who were still dreamers and visionaries and going after what they desired. And as a result of creating a global network of people after the la over the last decade, I've surrounded myself with people who I know love me, support me, and are going to encourage me and empower me to go after my dreams. And the ones who don't are gone. I have no qualm with blocking people or unfriending people on Facebook who I don't feel are supporting me in my dreams or aren't in the resonance of what I want to create in my life. So you got to take a look at your life, look at your dreams, look at your goals for 2016 and beyond and say, what are the relationships in my life that are toxic uh, to that dream, those dreams that I have? What relationships in my life are holding me back? Because if you are start to go after your dreams, but you're hanging around with people who have given up on theirs, they're going to do everything they can unconsciously to hold you where you are, not because they hate you, it's actually because they love you. It's actually because they don't want to lose you. So they continue talking to you as they know you, not as who you desire to be. So check in with your relationships and recognize which ones are toxic and which ones are supportive and empowering and continue to surround yourself with more people who are going to support you and encourage you and empower you to achieve your dreams. I have a quick story I want to share with you about a chicken farmer. So there's a chicken farmer. He inherited this farm from his father and all his life, all he knew was how to raise chickens on a chicken farm. One day he becomes really curious about the outer boundaries of his farm. And so he goes to the, the fence, he looks around, he's you know anxious and excited at the same time. He jumps the fence and he starts running through the forest and you know starts climbing these boulders. He feels this kind of surge of exhilaration and he keeps climbing, keeps climbing, keeps climbing, keeps climbing, gets to the top of the these boulders. He looks up and he sees this huge nest of eggs and he goes over, he looks up, makes sure there's no danger, he grabs one of the eggs, he picks it up and he realizes that they're eagle eggs. Looks up again, makes sure there's no danger, tucks it like a football, runs back down the boulders, jumps over his fence, goes back to his most prized hen and puts the egg under his most prized hen. Two weeks later, the egg hatches and out comes an eagle. But the eagle doesn't know that she's an eagle because she's surrounded by chickens. So for you know a couple years, this young eagle is living the chicken life, just you know doing the the, the chicken thing, you know, and doesn't know that that she's a chicken. And then one day she looks in the air, she sees this swarm of eagles up there, kind of circling, and she's so taken by it, she asks her brother and sister chicken and say, "Hey, brother and sister chicken, what's that up there?" And brother and sister chicken look up and they say, "Oh, that's." poetry in motion. That's the leader of the sky. Those are the eagles. And that young eagle began to look at herself and look up again at the eagles in the sky only to realize that she wasn't a chicken, that she was an eagle. And she had a choice to make in that moment, whether she was going to fly with the eagles or whether she was going to stay grounded with the chickens. Nothing wrong with being a chicken, but if you knew you had wings, would you fly?